the wetland site where the Ornitarium is built has got a 15 year history of both environmental arts and um, cultural education. So the idea is to have a site for focusing on um, both environmental education but also available for artists to, to um, be involved in. And so it's a site with a history of community arts involvement. But what the artists have done is taken a next step of both creating a art piece, which is the Ornitarium, but also a bird hide that's now going to be of great value for the ongoing environmental work of the, the wetland centre. We had gone on a, a bushwalk with uh, Basil Schur from the, the Green Skills and uh, Center for Sustainability, and we were walking around uh, Mount Lindsay, and he referred to something as a termitarium. And, and it was like, it seemed like a made-up word. It, it didn't seem like a real word. Working on the bird hide, it was like bird hide. You know, that's kind of mundane. And so then we thought of, you know, ornithology and, and a place where birds would hang out or live. And ornitarium was kind of the, the birth word of this place. The ornitarium is about 200 square feet, roughly 10 feet by uh, 12 feet with a little bit of overhang on the wall. There's a large platform that you can walk up a ramp to access, and then you're met with a a large wall and that wall does sort of conceptually separate you from a social space or a human habited, uh, inhabited space on the platform and then what's beyond in the wetlands behind the wall. The ornitarium itself sort of nuts and bolts, you know, similar to most bird hides. It has a long window and a shelf where you can rest your elbows on with a pair of binoculars and look through the window and then it also has two small windows for children that are located lower in the front wall it's set up. most of the wood that we've used on the front wall of the ornitarium is drawn from area lumber mills mostly end pieces so they're usually discarded by the mills early on we spent a lot of time researching different wood types and tree types we tried to put a little bit of everything in there so we have Carrie and Mary and Jera yeah, there's a bit of pine in there as well. We worked with other community members, a woman by the name of Tina Smith, who works with uh, Birds Australia. We walked out here with her and, okay, what's a good good site? Because uh, Richard and I and, and I'm 12 really aren't ornithologists. We have now an interest in birds much more than we did previously, and we've been seeing so many birds out here. I was asked through by Basil Sher through Green Skills to have a look or to meet the people coming down from M12, from IASCA, to select a spot on this wetlands that might be suitable for a, for a bird hide. The area now is so different from what it was then, but it's become a great bird and small mammal area. And where the hide has been built is a great spot because you can look out over wetlands to a little island. It's beautifully built, it's, it looks good, it blends in but it's got a lovely look about it and the work they did on it is just uh, wonderful because I'd, I have always sort of art as a picture on the wall sort of thing to me mm. and um, this has really opened my mind a bit to, to art, yes, to yeah. be art. I get lots of people asking me, um, it, uh, they're even bringing me pictures now of what, what is this bird and, and I think that's great, people are starting to look around their garden and and think. The result has, is a bird hide that's very practical. It, it allows visitors to the centre to um, explore the interface between land and water and also to um, be able to observe at close quarters the, the water birds. We see the Ornitarium as both an attraction in itself and a window into this whole new world of, the, of wetlands which um, Denmark, in, in fact, is, is well known for. It's a town surrounded by wetlands, um, everything from the local estuary to the local river environment to swamps and lakes.